Hello, everybody, and happy holidays. Which has nothing to do with logarithms. We work with them anyway. All right. So suppose you have a problem like this, and the instructions say express as a sum. That means we're supposed to take this and we're supposed to express it as something plus something because that's what a sum is. And one of the principles, one of the, the modes of arithmetic, if you will, of uh, logarithms says that when the bases are the same, so log base four, log base four, of two things multiplied in the argument of the function, of the logarithm function, what you do is you take the log of each of them and you add those logs. And notice that I also included the answers that you would be expected to write in my math lab. We'll get into what keys you punch later. Right now, here we have for number two, this is your homework. For number two, uh, here we have log base T and log base T with two things added, and they want us to express this as a single logarithm. In other words, they want us to start at this step and go back to this step. Only do it down here. So that's easy enough to do. If you can if you can do this to a logarithm, then you can go back the other way. So log base T. Of 26. Times 67. Now I don't know why they want you to go ahead and multiply them together because it's so much more important to write them this way, but let's do it just to keep them happy, make absolutely sure we actually come up with that answer. Okay, 1742. So 26 times 67 is 1742, and so we'll have log base T of 1742. And it's safer for you if you always put parentheses around the argument. This is called the argument, remember. Um, log base T of 1742. This is the base. This is the argument. Guess I should write it all out in the beginning. OK. Now, this incidentally is called the product rule both ways. It's called the product rule. And this is the product rule. Here we're going to use the power rule. Power rule. Now this is kind of weird, it takes some getting used to. 
but when you use the power rule, notice that, let me write this out larger, log base 10 of Z to the negative nine power. When you have an exponent in the argument, what the power rule says is you can bring that down in front, like I'm about to do, and you'll have the number negative nine times the log of Z. And you can see the way they write it here. Okay, you're not gonna see that 10 for long. Um, let's make this big for the moment. See the, the button log there on your calculator? That is log base 10, which is this. Most often we write log base 10 as negative nine log Z. And we don't bother to put the 10 down there. You'll see that that's true later. Remember, this is the beginning. All right, now we're going to use something called the quotient rule. That's because something in the argument right here is being divided. Notice that this says express as a difference of logarithms. Difference means subtraction. Which means you're going to have something minus something. In this case, we're going to split this up and make it log base T of D minus log base T of 10. And in D, let's check their answer. Yes, log base T of D minus log base T of 10. All right, these are the basic rules. We've got the product rule, the power rule, the quotient rule. We'll encounter some others as well. But right now, we're going to start unpacking these, and they're gonna be less than easy. So what I was told when I was a student is that I should write all these rules on cards and have them out beside me when I'm doing my homework. And we're going to do this problem step by step. So we're going to have log base C. Ah, how did that happen? log base C of, well, we could start it right here, couldn't we? Log base C do you see that this is the ninth root of this quotient up here, x to the fourth over y to the ninth times z to the eighth. All right, I'm going to unpack this one step at a time. Remember from what we studied before that the ninth root of, let's just say x, or a, or eight, it doesn't matter. 
The ninth root of eight can be written as eight to the one ninth power. It's what we're going to do here. Except we're going to have x to the fourth. We're going to copy the argument. And write this to the one ninth power. Then we're going to use the uh, uh, power rule and bring that one ninth down in front. <clears throat> one ninth times, actually, I'm going to make that into a bracket because we have parentheses here. log base C of X to the fourth over Y to the ninth, Z to the eighth. Okay. Now watch again, one step at a time. Now I'm going to use the quotient rule in here. And let's keep labeling because it will help. Here I use the power rule. All right, now remember that we now have a one ninth. In front of log base C, and if I use the quotient rule here, I will have log base C times of X to the fourth. Minus log base C. of y to the ninth, z to the eighth. Okay, now we have to unpack even more. All right, one ninth. Actually, I'm going to do something you probably haven't seen done. Since pre-algebra, I'm going to put a brace here because that's the, going to be the outermost paren. Log base C of x to the fourth. I'm going to use the power rule later, but I'm going to use it at the same time on all of them. Okay, now, minus bracket log base C of y to the ninth. Now, this is a product, so I'm going to use <clears throat> the product rule here. rule plus log base C of Z to the eighth. I want to put parentheses, parentheses. Parentheses. 
okay, why am I going to that kind of trouble? Because when I subtract, I'm going to be subtracting all of that. So that subtraction sign is going to go to here and to here. So before I use the product, um, no, before I use the power rule, because there are obviously powers that need to come down, before I do that, I'm going to distribute the negative sign. So coming over here now, going to have one ninth log base C of X to the fourth. Next step, I'm using the power roll. Minus log base C of Y to the ninth. Distribute, distribute, minus log base C of Z to the A. All right. Now we're still unpacking. All right, now I'm going to use the power rule. So here I use distribution. All right, all right, so this is going to be one ninth. Four log base C of X minus nine log base C of Y minus log base C. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Bring down the eight. Getting close to being done here. But notice you have to go very carefully. I'm talking to myself there too. All right, now. Now that we have used the power rule, let me write it over here, power rule. I'm going to again distribute this time I'm going to distribute the one ninth. There are three terms in here. And so we're going to multiply one ninth times the four, one ninth times the negative nine, and one ninth times the negative eight. So here we go. One ninth. times four, log base C of X, minus nine, and I'm gonna stick that one ninth in here, times one ninth, times log base C of Y, minus eight, times one ninth log base C of Z. And I probably should put the equal sign in front here. Okay, 
that way because I'm not saying this equals the power rule. I'm just using the power rule. And here I'm going to be just distributing. Which I'm going to have to cut short, distrib. OK. Almost done. One ninth times four is the same thing as one ninth times four over one. And when you multiply fractions together, you multiply the numerators together, you multiply the denominators together, and so you're going to have four ninths times log base C of X minus we can rewrite the nine as nine over one, same thing. Nine over one, multiply the numerators and the denominators together, we get nine over nine, that's going to be one. Log base C of Y. Minus, same thing's gonna happen here, rewrite eight as eight over one, Eight times one, one times nine, eight ninths times log base C of Z. All we did there was fraction multiplication. I don't know if I have to write that down. Um, okay, so our final answer is going to be four ninths log base C of X minus one times log base C of Y is log base C of Y. I suppose I could write a one times, but then I'd have to write another line without the one. So minus eight ninths log base C of Z. Ha! Huh. Let's see. Let's double check. I think that's right. Yeah. Four ninths log base C of X minus log base C of Y minus eight ninths log base C of Z. So there you go. And going one step at a time so that you can understand exactly what I did. First, I wrote the ninth root as the argument to the one ninth power. Then I used the quotient rule to bring it down in front. Then I used the product rule in here, but I had to put a bracket around log base C of Y to the ninth, Z to the eighth, because this would become a two term problem and they both had to be subtracted. Notice this one ninth is just hanging out for a really long time in front. Now log base C of X to the fourth, here we have all of this, then we use the power rule to bring our, po our powers down in front, then we distribute the one ninth in and multiply them by the numbers in front. Ah, then we work out what those are and then we write our final answer. It's like peeling an onion and it's kind of stinky like peeling an onion. Now, I don't believe that any of the other problems in the homework are this complicated. All right, my goodness. I mean, here they've gone back to some easy ones. I guess that's to kind of let you um, relax after doing that really hard one. So now we're going back to basics. Here we have the log 
of two things that are multiplied, so we are going to express them as a sum log base 7 of 14 plus log base 7 of 15. We can expand these. Now here we have another one we're going to use the product rule on. Log base 2 of 11 plus log base 2 of y. Now let's come over here and see what they're saying. Simplify your answer. I guess that's what we did. Now, ln. Here we go. It's officially true that ln means natural log. Natural logarithm. And if you're taking the ln of, let's say three, what that really is, is log base E of three. Where E is a number that's about 2.7. Okay, really close to three. So since the LN <clears throat> is just a logarithm, we're going to use the product rule. The LN of Y times Z is going to be the LN of Y plus the LN of Z. Oh, and you come over here and you choose your answer. The ln of y plus the ln of z. Notice that answer is almost right. If they had put an e down here, it would have been passable as an answer. Let me get rid of it. What this says when you just see log is log base 10. Completely different base. Ah, okay. Express as a product. Well, I thought the product rule meant something like this or that. Yes, it does but we're going to express the answer, the solution to this as a product. A product means multiplication. Okay, which means you're going to take, this is going to equal something times something. Well, what it's going to equal is this. You're going to use the power rule to bring that 10 down in front. So 10 times log of Z. And without a base down here, it's log base 10. But we don't have to write that. Dear. Now let's see if we can move this. No. All right, fine. 
We're going to use the uh, power rule here to express as a product. Okay, that'll be negative seven times log base C of X. Now express as a difference, that means subtract. You're going to have something minus something. Well, there's the answer. Log of K minus log of R. There you go. And express the ln of V over T as a difference. Well, that's going to be this. The ln of the numerator minus the ln of the denominator because ln is just a log. So you use the same rules with it. Now we start doing the stuff, the real stuff. Okay, aha, and now it's gotten its stuff together. Let's do this. Excuse me, okay. So x squared plus 9x plus 20, now I'm just writing the argument first, over x squared minus 25. This is the argument. And notice we're using the uh, quotient rule here. You have log, doesn't say what base, so you know it's 10, log base 10. but most of the time you don't write it. So notice they haven't written it. Okay, this is what we're dealing with. We have used the quotient rule to take the log of x squared plus 9x plus 20. Darn. Being sloppy today, just hitting everything. Okay. It's because I haven't used this for how many days? Goodness. Log of x squared minus 25, and that's being subtracted. It could only be the product rule. Now we're going to factor. Remember factoring? It never leaves you. You will always have to factor. Um, x plus 4. times x plus 5. And how I knew to do that was that 20 equals 4 times 5. 9 equals 4 plus 5. Meanwhile, x squared minus 25, fact, it, uh, that's a perfect square, that's a perfect square, so it factors by the difference of two squares. And look at that. You've got x plus four over x plus five. I mean, x plus four times x plus five over x minus five times x plus five. The x plus fives cancel, leaving you with the solution right there, the log of x plus 4 over x minus 5. Now, here's another long one. Now, I want to warn you about these on the test. The math department this time has decided to put some multiple choice questions on the test. And these look almost exactly alike. 
OK, this is grown up multiple choice. So. You're going to have to come out with your own answer first. And then compare what you've got to the four possible answers. There are a number of problems like this on the final exam. All right, so again, how we do this, we are going to unpack this one step at a time. Now the instructions say express in terms of sums and differences. So we're gonna break it all the way down to sums and differences. So let's do it. Log base B of P to the third times Q to the fifth minus log base B of M to the fifth B to the seventh. You're about to meet another rule, only we did talk about it last week, so maybe you'll remember, but maybe not. What this is going to break down into is log base B of P to the third plus log base B of Q to the fifth close bracket minus open bracket log base B of M to the fifth Okay, m to the fifth plus log base b of b to the seventh. Unpack some more. Um, we have something, we have an invisible positive one out here. So if we distribute the positive one, that'll be one times this. So we'll have log base P, B of P to the third, plus log base B of Q to the fifth, minus all of this, both of these. So distribute, distribute. A minus sign is the equivalent of a minus one. So minus log base B of M to the fifth, minus log base B of B to the seventh. Okay, I'm going to be putting my equal signs in front now. Um, equals, bringing down all those powers in front, three times log base B of P plus five times log base B of Q minus, I bring the five down in front of the log, five times log base B of M minus seven times log base B of B. 
But guess what? Probably half of you remember that whenever your base and your argument are identical, then this log base B of B equals one. So our final answer is going to be three log P. Ah, uh, I forgot a B. Oh, don't tell anybody. Log base B of P plus five log base B of Q minus, they're both five? Are we sure? Yeah, all right. Yes, we are. All right. Minus five log base B of M minus seven times one is seven. Now, let's check the answer. There it is, right there at the bottom, D. Three log base P plus five, that is three log base B of P plus five log base B of Q minus five log base B of M minus seven. And if doing these seems pretty hopeless, then put your memorizer to work. Learn the rules and apply them carefully one rule at a time. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so now we have the LN, the log base E. We're going to use the quotient rule first since there's a quotient. So that'll be the LN of three minus the LN of two X squared Y. Now this is a product so I'm going to have to put a bracket around these. And what this is going to equal is the ln of three minus bracket ln two plus the ln of x squared plus the ln of y. Now let's see how much more room I've got. Mm, nah, okay. So we'll rewrite this as the ln of three minus bracket the ln of two plus two ln x, plus the ln of y, all right, now we're going to distribute the minus sign. It's like multiplying everything in the brackets by negative one. equals the ln of three minus the ln of two minus two times the ln of x minus the ln of y. 
And let's check our answer. ln of 3 minus ln of 2 minus ln x minus ln y. Okay. So see, you're just applying the rules and previous knowledge like this. That's a square root. You don't see an index, so you know the index is an invisible two, which means you can also write this and you need to write it as the log of the argument b to the fifth times c raised to the one half power. Anything to the one half power is the square root. Now we can use the power rule. One half times log of b to the fifth c. That's a product in there. So, yep, I need to put a bracket around it. This is going to be one half bracket. log of b to the fifth plus log of c and then coming back over here we'll have one half five times log base b, I mean log of b. The base is 10 because we don't see a base. Um, in the, yeah, plus log c. Now we distribute the one half. We're gonna multiply five by one half and the invisible one in front of log base C by one half. So we're going to have five over two log base B plus one half log base C. Now one half times one is of course one half, but one half times five, let's come down here and calculate it. One half times five is the same thing as one half times five over one, which is one times five is five, two times one is two. Or quite honestly, you can multiply one half times five in your calculator and then math frack the answer. We've only got two to go. You can survive. I have faith you can survive. OK, here we go. Here's one half times log base C plus seven times log base D. I need to write these as a single logarithm. To do that, I have to have log something plus log something. That means I have to return these numbers in front of the logarithm back to their original positions as exponents. This is going to be log base C to the one half power. plus log base D to the seventh power, which will be log Did I say base C? 
Oh, got it. It's log base 10. Log base 10. Let's say it again. Log base 10 of C to the 1 half plus log base 10 of D to the 7th. You don't have to write the 10 unless you keep calling the argument a base. All right, now we're going to multiply the bases. We'll have <laughs> multiply the arguments. We're going to have C to the 1 half times D to the seventh, which finally will give us log of the square root of C times D to the seventh. And because there's such a danger of making the computer think that you mean for that D to be under the radical. We're going to rewrite this as log of D to the seventh times the square root of C, and that's the most correct way to write this. And there you go. So we have one half log C plus seven log D. We have to put the exponents back. Well, I consider I consider this putting them back where they were before they got put down in front. So this is going to be log of C to the one half plus log of D to the seventh. And using the product rule that equals log of C to the one half times D to the seventh. And then we change c to the one half to the square root of c, which is which is what it is, times d to the seventh. And then we move d to the seventh to the front of the square root radical, just to make sure that you know, and that my math lab knows, and that I know that you're not trying to stick D to the seventh underneath the radical. Remember, you can replay this video over and over and over again, even if you don't want to. Okay, now we're being asked to express this as a single logarithm. All right, well, let's study this a little bit. Here we've got the ln of x to the fourth, which is just fine. But here we've got numbers in front, we've got square roots, we've got, we've got, I mean, this is terrible. Until you notice, that's a square root. And you know what happens when you square a square root? You get the argument. So, I happen to know that, and you know it, that the square root of x to the third, if you square that square root, will be x to the third. So let's do that. We're going to take this two and put it up there so that we'll have the ln of x to the fourth minus the ln of the square root of x to the third squared, which is going to be the ln of x to the fourth minus the ln of x to the third. My goodness, isn't that pretty? Well, now we're going to use the quotient rule because we've got we've got uh, logarithms of the same base and we're subtracting, so that means use the quotient rule. This is going to be the ln of x to the fourth over x to the third. Well, we can use the uh, quotient rule of exponents here. Uh, 
This is going to be the ln of 4, oh, the, the ln of x to the 4 minus 3 power. That's, that's the quotient rule of exponents. So it's going to be the ln of x to the 1, which, guess what, is just the ln of x. Which indeed is our answer right here. Okay. Now I am looking for something. I want to, before you um, start thinking about the other subjects you work on, I want to also do a little bit of a review of That, I can't believe that's all there is. No, we'll wait till tomorrow for this. Something we did last week. Okay, what did we do last week? Does anybody remember last week? Um, yes, these. Okay, what we did, if you recall, is we converted exponential expressions to logarithmic expressions and logarithmic expressions to exponential expressions. And I don't want you to forget this because you're going to need all of it tomorrow. Okay, we know that this is the cube root of eight and it does equal two, that is not exciting. But what we have to do is convert this to the logarithm statement right there. And so you need to know how the parts correlate. When you write a logarithmic expression, You have log, the word log, most of the time. You have the base, that's a number that's written as a subscript. You have the argument. And you have a number that is the exponent from the equivalent exponential expression. Now, what this means is that the exponent one third would go here. The base of the exponent goes here. And the number that's left over is the argument two. 
And what this says is that eight raised to the one third power equals two. This is how exponential and logarithmic expressions, equations um, are exactly equivalent. Now let's try it down here. Using this, here we have log base argument equals exponent all right so what you're going to do is you're going to take the base and raise it to the exponent and that's going to equal your argument So the base is here, the exponent is there, and the argument is going to go there. So what we're going to have is 3 to the 5th power, 3 to the 5th power equals 243. And that's true, by the way, if you put it in your calculator. So the number down here goes there. The number over here goes here. And the argument of the log function goes here. Okay, here we have a base holding up an exponent. I sort of picture a Greek column on a government building. Um, the base holds up the top of the column. All right, you've got base, exponent, that part's easy. So your exponent is three and your base is 10. And the other number is what the argument's going to be. The argument of the log function is going to be 1,000. So now what we do is write log base exponent. And then I always come back and write argument. So what this is going to be then is log. The base is 10. The exponent, which we write out here on the other side of the equal sign. And the argument is the number that's left over. What are you going to do with it? Well, put it in here. What logarithms do is they give you the exponent. So if you know the base and you know the argument, but you just need to know the power that 10 is raised to, to give you the argument, you would find the logarithm base 10 of 1,000, and that would give you the number three. Same thing here, here's the exponent. Here's the base. And here's the other number, which ends up being the argument. So when you write this as a logarithmic function, the base goes down here. So you're going to write a one fifth. You're going to write the argument up here if you like to go in that order, argument. That's going to be four. And then on the other side of the equal sign is where the exponent goes, and that's one fifth. 
So you'll have uh, um, um, argument exponent. Yeah, yeah, the base is not one fifth. What, what, where am I? That's a good question. Where am I? Uh, the base is going to be 1040. 1024. All right, so we're going to have log base 1024 of the argument 4 equals 1 fifth. There now. So we'll just do the first five here. Um, here's the base E. Write it. I need to write that out. The base is E. The exponent is 2. And the argument is T. So we'll have log base E of T equals 2. Now the only thing is that log base E is not what log base E is called. Log base E is the LN. So we have to rewrite this one time as ln of t equals 2. Okay, I just wanted to bring that back into your memory too. Um, and before we did this, we did this. Um, we did a real short sheet called Introduction to Logarithms, and I want you to look at that real quickly too, so that you can look at it tonight when you're working because it will help you. Let's see, Introduction to Logarithmic Functions. There it is, yeah. Uh, you have this in the notes too, and these were in the notes from last week. Um, how uh, how the uh, exponential function turns into the logarithmic function, how the product rule, quotient rule, power rule, zero power rule, and power of one rule of exponents turn into the same rules of logarithms because they're very closely related. And then how you find the inverse of an exponential function so that it becomes a logarithmic function. And finally, how these parts convert. And then after we went through this sheet, we spent a good time going, a, a good deal of time going through it. We then worked on converting exponential equations to logarithmic equations and logarithmic equations to exponential equations. And then today we got deeply, deeply, deeply into these rules of logarithms. And tomorrow we start putting it all together. Okay, this is just to help you get over that off time during Thanksgiving, that is off from school. So hopefully this will work. And I will see you on Wednesday when we're going to do, um, we're going to solve exponential equations. And you're going to see that the way we solve exponential equations is by turning them into logarithmic equations. Yes, it works. And then we're going to solve logarithmic equations next Monday. And you'll see that 
uh, the way that we solve logarithmic equations is to figure out a way to turn them into an equivalent exponential equation and then solve that. So this is going to be a very interesting time. So get ready. Learn these arithmetic of logarithm rules. Write them on your brain. Go to a tattoo artist and get them written on your brain. I'm sure there's a science fiction story where that becomes easy. OK, and I'll see you Wednesday, but I'm doing office hours every day this week from 3 to 6. So come on by if you have questions. If you can't make it during those times, then come at some other time. Just contact me about when you want to meet with me, and I'll be glad to work with you. Finals are coming up. Two weeks. And then it's over. So you got to learn the whole semester. Talk to you later. Bye bye. And happy holidays. <laughs>